Today on The Long Gunner, I'm going to teach you how to make ballistic gelatin so that we can do some bullet expansion tests. Some of the stuff that we're going to need to make this, I'm using this ammo can right here. This size holds a gallon and a half of water perfectly, plus uh, all of your gelatin powder, and it'll get right about up to that lip about the time you get it all mixed up. Some of the other stuff that I got, I went to the hardware store, and I've had these a while. They're actually made for mixing paint, but uh, it'll hold a gallon. Shows quartz pints on there, and then the small version of it that goes pints and ounces on there. Got both those. Those are all of like five bucks at the hardware store. Um, some hydrogen peroxide. You can get that for like two or three dollars at the Dollar Tree or Dollar General or whatever. Um, Nox gelatin. Um, use Nox gelatin because it is some of the clearest gelatin that you can get. So if you want to see the see the actual bullet cavity that's left behind, the permanent cavitation, it's going to show that the best with that brand. It's also a little stronger, so you won't have to use quite as much. But it does come in three different sizes. Um, you can get a one-pounder off Amazon for $15.50. Um, these eight-ouncers that are full of these little packets that you got to cut open that are kind of a pain in the butt, that's $14.50 for those. And then, like, I ran a little bit short with all that. So I ended up having to buy a couple of these uh, one-ouncers. These are $2.50 a piece. So you really get robbed buying it in the smaller packages. Buy the one-ounce plastic containers, or the one-pound plastic containers. It'll just make things a whole lot easier. Um, a meat scale. Uh, got that for making up my deer jerky, stuff like that, but I use that for weighing the stuff out. Um, the big thing that you're going to need is going to be a turkey roaster. Um, you want one that gets down. I set that right at about 150 degrees when I'm melting the stuff down. This is a 22 quart one. Also got this on sale at Walmart for like, I don't remember what it was, 55 bucks or something. So nothing too expensive. So when we make this stuff, the ratio is eight to one. Now, when I was looking this up, a lot of guys didn't say whether that was weight, uh, whether it was volumetric, but a cross combo of the two, but it is weight. Um, normally you don't measure uh, water in weight, but for this you have to. A gallon of water weighs a little over eight pounds. I think they say, you know, give or take, it should be 8.34 pounds is one gallon of water. But for every gallon of water, we're going to use just over a pound of Nox gelatin in there. And then we're going to substitute just a little bit of that water with hydrogen peroxide. You want it between 5 and 10%. That's going to do two things for you. It's going to clear up your gel block a little bit. I've got one here with hydrogen peroxide, one without. I'll show you that in a second. But it'll also make it so that it won't mold on you. Now... This mold, or ammo can, conveniently holds about a gallon and a half of water. So with one quart of hydrogen peroxide, we can make about three uh, gelatin blocks. So you'll need a little over a pound and a half worth of gelatin mix, gallon and a half of water, mixes up in there perfectly to the, to the top line on there. Now, let me set this stuff aside. Let me show you the difference with or without. This is with hydrogen peroxide. This is without. Now, it doesn't seem like much of a difference on here. Let me uh, bring the camera up here. Yeah, you can kind of see the difference in color through there without hydrogen peroxide with hydrogen peroxide see the edge of that that's going to allow you to be able to see that bullet track a whole lot easier going through there and it's just going to straight make that uh, gel block just last longer the other thing that i should mention is if you notice right there 
this is the block with hydrogen peroxide in it and it's already starting to react with that BB the other block right there you can tell nothing's wrong with that one that hydrogen peroxide is quite reactive to the BB or if you leave lead in there inside the block it'll also make that stuff kind of turn white so when you're remelting these down after you use them make sure that you get all the metal scraps out of there because otherwise it'll it'll react with it so one of the keys to making this stuff is get your water cold it will work out better um, so that it will mix in a little bit easier if you're using hot water this stuff will want to melt right away and then it just makes kind of these gluey balls that you gotta try to try to mix out and it doesn't go quite as well um, it'll want to clump up a little bit as you're pouring it in here but all you got to do is really kind of agitate the water a little bit and it doesn't take much to get the clumps out of it when it's cold it just seems to mix a little bit easier just as soon as you touch them they start breaking up just kind of stir it back and forth throw a little more in there if you just pour it all in and one time it'll just kind of turn into a big lump so it actually starts breaking itself up better once it starts to thicken up a little bit better so you just kind of smash it against the sides it just starts dissolving I already feel it starting to get a little bit thicker here as I'm stirring. It'll kind of get a bit of foam on it. Um, that's not too much to worry about. I've seen other people's videos where they just scraped it off the top at the end of it. But really, if you just start tapping on the side of it, it uh, the bubbles start coming out of it. and I don't think it's worth doing because the top side is going to be the least clearest here when it hardens up in this mold so there's uh there's no point in scraping the stuff off it's just a little bit of a waste of time that's the side i'll put down on the table or on the stand as i'm as i'm shooting it anyway we'll look through the bottom side or through the sides of this from the mold so almost getting it probably halfway through There we go. We're just going to pour the rest of this in here. Give it a stir. Now you can see that this stuff is going to be, you know, as others have put it, kind of the consistency of a, of a thin applesauce. It's really 
kind of what it's going to look like. So I'll stir it up here a little bit more. Get some of these lumps out. Get some of the foam off of there. Some of the powder down off the sides. And if it's still got some lumps in it, it doesn't really matter. When we melt it back down, after we let this stuff bloom, it'll all just melt away. Any of, any of them lumps that are still left in there, it won't matter at all. I could use a little longer spoon than this one, but... That's the one I happen to grab. Alright, that's about right. That's that's as mixed as it's going to get. Like I said, about like kind of a thin applesauce in there is what we're looking for. As that stuff sits in the refrigerator, this will start to, what they call bloom, it'll start to stiffen up. But, uh, it won't be it won't be clear yet it won't be clear until we melt it back down and then put it back in the refrigerator so all right let's get this cooling down let it firm up probably let it go overnight and uh, tomorrow morning we'll end up throwing it in the turkey roaster so it's the next day here's our gelatin you can definitely tell it's changed texture. It's a bit firmer. I mean, it's still kind of mushy, but it's bloomed, and that's what you want. So our next step is to go ahead and throw it in the throw it in the roaster here. Put the camera up there. Let's take the whole ammo box, set it in there, turn it to about 150. Put the lid on it, start heating it up. We'll come back in about two hours, take a look at it. It should have melted. It's been about an hour and 45 minutes. As you can see, it's now a heck of a lot clearer. And all there really is is that one little piece there. I'll break that up. Looks good. Stir it around a little bit. All that foam and stuff that was in there I mean it all just melts down and it's clear I'll let that go a little bit longer get them last that little chunk right there melted down and then should be ready to go back in the refrigerator okay let's take this out of here it's had a little while longer to melt you can see all the bubbles and everything are pretty much out of that. There's just a couple. Shine a flashlight down in there. I mean, you can see all the way to the bottom. Sometimes if there's some bubbles on the side, just start tapping that side. And then the bubbles will come off of there. That way, when you actually go to shoot it, then you can see past it. There's no, there's no bubbles in the, in the side of it that you can't see through. So, there we go. Tap around the edges. There it goes. The last bubbles on there. That side doesn't look like it's got any. That side's good. All right, back to the refrigerator it goes. Cool down. Here we are a couple days later. Nice thing about using an ammo can is uh, it's got a handle on it to carry the thing around because it does weigh, oh, I don't know, nine and a half, ten pounds or so. It's set up now. First thing we got to do is kind of break the edge on it a little bit. 
it being plastic it's kind of flexible on the box so set that up there get my hands wedged in here kind of break that seal kind of give it some pressure and it'll just slowly start coming out of there tearing it a little bit shouldn't be pushing at it quite so fast there it popped there we go there is our gelatin block I mean you can still see it's Fairly orange color, doesn't help that I got it sitting on that. Hold up my computer here behind it. I mean, out there in daylight brightness, you'll be able to see through that just fine. Once you've made your gelatin blocks, I mean, it does take some time to go through the whole process. So while I'm storing them, um, wrap them up in saran wrap. Because in the refrigerator, they'll slowly start drying out. It'll help keep all the stuff off of them, you know, preserve them for as long as possible. Because with the hydrogen peroxide in there, I mean, you can store these things for quite a few weeks and they'll stay good. But if they're exposed to all the air current in there, it will start drying it out. You'll see it around the edges kind of start contracted on there. It'll get harder and then it'll throw everything off. Uh, you know, it won't let the block expand like it's supposed to when the bolts go through there and they'll start cracking and splitting. So just wrap them up for storage and that'll keep them longer for you. So to test this block to see if we got the right density on it, um, for standard FBI 10% gelatin block, what they say to do is just get you a cheap old BB gun, a 177 cal BB gun, and you want the BB to do about 590 feet per second, and when it hits it, it should get about three to three and a half inches worth of penetration on here. So let's shoot this thing and uh, see how well we did. All right. Let's put a BB in this thing here. Go up here, break out the tape measure, see what we did here. Mm, it's close, might be on the, oh yeah, about three and an eighth, it's about right. See that wound channel in there, I'll focus on that BB. Yep, that'll work out just right. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Hopefully you found today's video interesting and informative. Um, one of the subscribers had asked if I could you know, shoot it with a regular caliber and not blow the things up. So as per his request, I will shoot it with some 22 long rifle ammunition, shoot a couple different types through it, and we'll see what type of bullet tracks we got through them. So we'll catch you on the next one.